Okay, just got back from the UP. This is a uh, post trip gear breakdown of what I used. Uh, UP, Sylvania Wilderness, fantastic area. Uh, no mechanization or power tools or buildings or anything is allowed on the property. Even when they have to cut uh, deadfalls down t out of the trail, they use, uh, I guess, big two man buck saws. They cannot take chainsaws back there or anything. Those are the rules of the wilderness. So, um, you know, it's a beautiful area. I guess in emergency cases they can take, you know, snowmobiles or, or stuff back there, but that's, that's only for rescue. Rescue only. Uh, no motors on the lakes, uh, nothing. Uh, so, things that I call this 80 pounds of gear, 40 hours from the time I left to the time I get back, 30 gallons of gas, and 2 gallons of water trip. That's what I call it. Two to three gallons of water, depending on how you count it. Uh, too much gear, I, I realize that. This isn't even everything. You've seen my polk sled. Polk sled worked okay for what it was. It was free. It was too top heavy. It tipped over twice. Uh, 80 pounds of gear is too much to, to lug. Uh, 50 would be just fine. Uh, but my big three, what I call the big three in this case, which is my tent stove, my tent, in my sleeping bag and the pulk sled itself that weighs about 35 pounds right there so unless I'm willing to change any of those which is going to cost money or com comfort um, you know I, I'm pretty much starting out with 35 pounds so where's the other 45 pounds go well you know food water clothing and some tools you, you had the saw and the axe uh, in my little chair you know that's about seven or eight pounds there so I have to start sacrificing comfort which I may have to do because I with the, the stats of the trip it was basically low of 14 uh, probably average temperature of 21 a light snow not raining not really windy at all which was beautiful um, you know we did about 3.75 miles each day to the campsite and back had to break trail uh, lost the trail a few times, had to do some switch switchbacks up some ridges, so we did some bushwhacking, uh, which was the hard uh, over deadfalls. The, the sled I had is way too shallow for that kind of stuff. So those are kind of the, I don't know, the negative points of the trip. Uh, it was fantastic. I, would, I wouldn't trade the experience for anything. It was only 24 hours out there, but it was fantastic. Things that worked well. These boots worked really well. Uh, of course, they don't have liners in them, but for the $50, they're waterproof, resistant. They kept my feet dry. I sweat in them in the morning. They were frozen solid, of course. Uh, you know, you have to walk around with them unlaced, and then they loosen up and put in a dry pair of socks and tough it out. One of the mistakes I made, smaller mistakes, I left my down booties out in my pack outside. One of the few things I left outside the tent, so I just threw on an extra pair of uh, heavy wool socks over my darn tough merino wool sock. So success. There, I think, fantastic success. Uh, one of the comments made and when we got back, the guy was with said, I could really go for some Taco Bell when we got back. Well, I kind of extended my trip into the evening hours by eating what I would normally eat when I was out there, preparing it like I was out there as much as I could. Pulled over at the wayside, made myself my own, own homemade tacos, uh, using my own dehydrated chili, some cheese, tortilla shells, uh, all warmed up in this little cup right here. Huge success of the trip in my opinion, my alcohol paint can heater stove. If you nurse it using this simmer ring right here, so this is my simmer ring thing, about six ounces of 91% isopropyl alcohol, which had no problems with freezing. Uh, I can get about five to six hours of this. Now if I have it full bore like that, I'm not going to get much more than an hour, hour and a half. Uh, that five or six ounces of alcohol, but it's really pretty efficient. Doesn't gasify really. You got to play with it, but with this little setup here, it ain't a great setup, but it's an okay setup as long as you're out of the wind. Huge thing, be out of the wind. This will get water to hot slash simmer, so I can rehydrate meals. Takes a while, takes about 12 minutes to do a couple of cups, but you know, in the meantime, I'm getting warm. So this is a warmth system as well as a heating system. When I'm all done. You know, I put it over here. This is, you know, totally on low, you know, medium, and then high. And if I put it out, I just put that in there, it slides in there, and snuffs it out. So, huge success in my opinion. Uh, buck saw, huge success. Uh, I love that thing. Homemade 24-inch Baco blade. Uh, 
huge success. Again, this is gear I used a lot. I mean, almost all the time. I couldn't do without any of this gear, I don't think. These are the things I wouldn't do without. Uh, trekking poles, $10 a piece, Walmart brand, not fantastic. Need to have a multi-tool to adjust these little telescoping clamps here because, you know, they're kind of funky. We didn't have huge deep powder, so baskets, not having a basket was not an issue. Leatherman Juice, S2, fantastic. I wish the blade locked. That's the only thing I would change about this. Uh, but worked great, everything I needed to do. Phoenix LD20 on the Night Eyes clip, fantastic. Headlamp, no problems there. Uh, compass with my little uh, pencil sheath right here. I can take this, all that is is Gorilla Tape. If I have to use it as a true base paper on compass. Uh, whistle, good. One big lighter, two mini big lighters. Fantastic. Work fantastic. Everything fantastic, huh? Some things weren't so fantastic. Thin pair of gloves. Work just fine. When I'm out there sawing wood at night, you want to have on a leather pair of gloves. My experience and opinion. Took the dog with me first time. Used, she was really on a cold, cold weather trip. She did fine. Uh, used this little overcoat she got for Christmas. That worked fine. No problems there kept her warm. When she slept at night, this was her sleeping mat. Here's her leash. All I did was put on a cheap bungee cord, clip that to my harness, and then if she would yank forward, it would be a little give there. No problems there. Uh, Frost Mora, or uh, the Mora Robust worked fine, split all the wood I needed, fire steel, sharpening rod, no problem there. One of the things I found at night, I was in the tent, you know, playing around with getting the stove and everything set up. Uh, you need kind of like a dresser top, in my opinion, because I carry too much stuff. When you're sitting down, crouched down, on your knees, on laying down, you know, getting at your pockets and your belt is hard. So this is my dresser top bag, junk drawer, whatever. When I, when I have something and I wouldn't be able to put it back in my pocket, this little knife or whatever, you know, the lighter, compass, whatever, I'm not going out. I'm pretty much in there for the night. Uh, this stuff just went in there. I don't have pockets on my tent. And then if I needed to, you know, go out, I'd just grab this and start taking stuff out. So that's just got all my junk drawer stuff in it. Worked well for me. Something I really learned. The other thing I learned on this trip that I've never done is um, I have my knife hanging on a ridge line in my tent. Because again, it's hard to get at your belt when you are crouched down like that, puzzling with my tent stove. So I just hung a ridge line and hung that up there and, you know, I just no problem. Keep it there. Worked good. Uh, the only water containers I took were these two. U.S. Army 2-quart canteen and this 27-ounce cheapy Walgreens flask in an outdoor Walmart uh, thing, uh, cozy here or whatever container latched to my uh, harness. My harness worked well. This worked good. I really started with this full. When we got to camp, I filled it again. I used that all the next day. I wouldn't think that'd be enough water. And, oh, you were dehydrated. You know, I was okay, you know, I mean, was I, was uh, my urine clear and all the things, I was okay, I was a little dehydrated, didn't really freeze too much, this did freeze because I had it laying down, so I had to, you know, pour some hot water on here, um, this froze up, this little, you know, squirty thingy, but, you know, the, the threads didn't freeze, I was okay. This is the uh, saw pouch, or I guess the chaplain's pouch. In here was my binoculars, my camera, my GPS. We only used the GPS to track mileage. Other than that, we used the trails and the map. That was a huge eye-opener to me. Uh, nobody had been on the trails. In this wilderness, they cannot mark, they do not mark the trails. I don't know if it's a rule, but they, they don't mark the trails. There are no blazes, there are no signs, there is nothing. There's a sign when you get to your camp that says Badger 1. You have to get there yourself. Uh, we got a little turned around because we did. So we got the compass out. We did not use the GPS. We used the land features. It, it, it worked out. You know, we probably put in an extra three quarters of a mile or a mile, but we, we were fine. You know, no problem. Uh, you know, hats off to the guy I was with. It, was, it wasn't me. Idaho instant potatoes. Fantastic. Uh, one of the things I did on this trip was had to melt my water at night out of the snow. And you get all kinds of forest debris, flavicles. Uh, seasoning, whatever you want to call it, uh, for a seasoning. Uh, so two quarts of snow made about 27 ounces of water. So I had to heat this up three times to melt it to get this completely full, three to four times. Drink one. I've never, we had kind of a smoky fire. We know it was smoky. It wasn't cold. 
so on and so forth. We were just making little twig fires all we were doing, just for the purpose of melting the snow. It tastes like smoke. It's not bad when it's in the food. I didn't notice it at all, but when you're drinking straight water, it was not too nice. So, Tang to the rescue. I didn't take this container. Some in here. Tang and hot chocolate coffee to the rescue there. Uh, this was full of homemade gorp, which I use raisins, cashews, honey roasted peanuts, and uh, peanut covered M&Ms. I'm not allergic to peanuts, obviously. I, this stuff was like almost like a drug. I mean, I was I was consuming this. It was full. It's about 16 ounces before I left. So in 24 hours, I gobbled that whole thing up whenever I could. Uh, Tabasco sauce, I use that all the time. My chili, my potatoes, I just love it. Peanut butter also, I give the dog peanut butter to get some energy, to get myself energy. Frozen peanut butter on a stick. Good stuff. I didn't take this whole thing. I got a smaller one. Also worked well. Light my fire sparks, no problems. Cozy, no problems. I mentioned that. Here's my homemade coffee tea bag. Two tablespoons of coffee with a filter and a rubber band on it. Get your water boiling, hopefully. Let it sit in there and steep like a tea bag. Makes fine coffee. It isn't perfect. Uh, one of the things I did learn was you get all those uh, forest droppings, I call them, or flavicles. You, you filter it through some kind of a strainer, similar to a coffee strainer like this. And the guy I was with, Fixed by Doc, had one uh, that stands up on, on your, on, it clips on and stands up on there. GSI makes it. Definitely going to get it. I try and stay away from the gimmicky stuff if possible. Uh, forest service where you had to check in was leaving leave no trace cards again this is a wilderness area they, they, they use buck saws to take down uh, deadfalls that are across the trail no power tools at all no mechanization other than in a, a search and rescue situation isopropyl alcohol I didn't take both of these uh, these will leak these bottles will leak after you take them open so have something I have heard that I, alcohol will eat away aluminum. I don't know, big debate on that. I put it in my stainless steel clean canteen. Thermos worked well enough. Not fantastic, but well enough. Wool shirt, fantastic. Down vest. Didn't wear it at all during the day. Wear it around camp. Dog used it as a quilt blanket at night. Fantastic. Frost River Day Pack, Summit Day Pack. Fantastic. U.S. Army wool surplus pants, also fantastic. Definitely not waterproof Gore-Tex, but I was kneeling around in the snow, wore them all day, they dried out, no problem. Now these are a little big for me. That was a not fantastic <laughs> issue. Uh, my belt just wasn't holding them up because they're a little big for me. So I may have to go to suspenders. That was kind of uh, frustrating, you know, they kind of get down and, you know, I got the harness on and it was a hassle. Police at night, very good. Another minor mistake, but I knew I was making it. When we headed out from camp in the morning to go back, I kept these on from overnight because I started, you know, uh, breaking down my campsite and I was too lazy to change out of them. Uh, that was a mistake. I was way too hot. I knew I, that would happen. Uh, these silk long johns underneath these for the first day, perfect. My, my body temperature was, was regulated perfectly. Uh, these little fingerless with plus mitten uh, polypropylene fleece, they're really good, but if they get wet, uh, not fantastic. Uh, they didn't, but I've had them when they get wet and they're pretty useless. Uh, wool over, wool, um, I'm sorry, wool, canvas and leather over mitts, good because they're around you and uh, available. And eh, kind of heavy, again, if they get wet, they start being a little less than ideal. I call them medium, you know, not fantastic. Uh, the US, three U.S. Army shelter hats. Hopefully you've seen my video on that. Now this thing weighs 10 pounds. This is my tent. I don't need to take anything other than this. I can make, you know, uh, sticks, take deadfall sticks and make my poles out of it. I got my two trekking poles. This is what I use for stakes. Is these uh, galvanized uh, landscaping stakes. They're about 7 inches. They work very, very, very good. I mean the ground was frozen solid, obviously. Uh, so, I'll give that a fantastic. I'll give this a fantastic. Tent stove. I cut green wood for my firewood at night. Big, big mistake. The biggest mistake I've ever made. Uh, when we got to camp, I cut enough wood out of a deadfall area. It was off the ground. It was maple. It was perfect. I made my fire at night. 
in my wood stove, cooked it up, went out at night, which I don't like to do, to the same place to get the rest of the wood. And uh, some of the wood I got, well, the rest of the wood I got was green, so no fire at night in the tent stove. Uh, mistake, let him learn. I didn't die. Wasn't as comfortable as I'd like to be, especially when I cut all that wood, but hey, that's what it is, and split it. Uh, this is a helmet liner balaclava. This I wear this during the day as a stocking cap and at night I sleep in it full face mask. Fantastic. Uh, old wool sweater. I don't even know what brand this is. It's zip up. This is what the dog used as along with this. This is the down plus this. It completely buried itself in there. You know, I would just open it up and throw it over the quilt. She'd curl up. She put her nose completely under there. She could breathe. Worked well. I think that's everything. Overall, good trip. Lots of fun. Learned a ton of things. It was only out one night. It's not a true test of everything because your gear gets wet. It gets heavy. The pulk slide has to change. I knew that before I left. But, a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. Just do it sometimes. You know, you just got to get out there and try and learn for yourself what works, what doesn't. Thanks for watching.